Welcome back. Today we're gonna visit the buttock houses close to Lake Toba. My friend who is hosting me, you have a buttock cultural background. Buttock Toba, I'm a buttock. So we're gonna check out some of the traditional buttock houses. They have a very interesting architecture. This is the buttock house. The buttock house is 120 years old. 120? Yeah, 120. Nice. Our house stay for eight families. Eight families eight live families, in this one. Yeah, yeah. How many people is eight families? Maybe they have uh, for each like uh, two children or three children they can stay here. After they have enough money, they can go to the outside for the uh, building their house. I have uh, seven students around for me. Oh, that's cool. That's the original Batak house. So there are still people living in here. So uh, I am entering a people's home. Yeah, but it's okay. Yeah. Are you sure? Long time ago, if they get married, they just stay here. Uh -huh. This is the staff. This is where they cook. Yeah, cooking uh, all from uh, wooden, uh, from the bamboos. You can see from the roof. From oh the yeah, it's made out of bamboo. There's a sleeping. Batak houses are traditional homes of the Batak people from northern Sumatra, designed to accommodate large extended families. The interior typically has no walls, allowing multiple generations to live together in a shared space. The roof is the most striking feature, often steeply sloped. Traditionally, these houses are constructed using wood and bamboo. So that was the Batak house. Now I should climb out of here without actual dying. Yeah, not easy, right? All right, so that was the old Batak house. That house was 120 years old. And now we go to a newer one, which I'm really, really curious how much of a difference it's gonna show compared to the old one. Oh, that's the new one. Yeah. Really? Hello. Hello. Yeah. These kids live here? Yes. Uh, Eight families living yeah, in this eight, house eight right now. Living here. Wow. Eight families. How many people was that count? Dude, eight families is like, what, like 25 people? 30? When my friend told me it was a newer house, I was not expecting this one. Turned out that instead of 120 years, this one is only 80 years old. He told me about the people living here, their way of life, their struggles, and the generosity as well. They've been very friendly and welcoming towards me. Here, eight families. Eight families eight living families here. here. It's the original, right? This is yeah. the uh, uh, Batak traditional houses. Yeah. Have a nice day. So that was the Batak house, the newer one. Many kids around here. After that, we visited some of my new friend's family. My friend got a family here. Right over here. Hello. Oh, yeah, I do. I do. Shoes down here. I don't want to just walk in like that. So. Hello. Hello, my name is Levi. Hello. Nice to meet you. Also. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet Hello. you. They were hanging out chewing betel leaves, which is a stimulant effect similar to nicotine. Is this addictive? No. The the betel? So why is everyone chewing it all the time? Can I try it? Of course! Because you're the first time, it's seldom. Maybe you look like the confused. Which one? I think it's just using of the betel, but without tobacco, right? I wanna, I wanna have the full experience. <laughs> so you take the leaf. This is make your the leaf your red after. Banana. Now what is that? Yeah, this is uh, make combine the this one, and then will be red. Your leaf will be red. <laughs> That's it. Yes, they're eating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your lip is red. It's numbing my mouth. It looks like this. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. So this stuff just numbed my mouth, basically. My tongue is like... Oh. I can imagine that you get hooked on it. Especially if you mix it with tobacco and then chew it like that. Get all this nicotine in your system. Yeah, I think it can be highly addictive to do this. Thank you very much. It was nice. Bye bye. Yeah, let's go. Now we're going down to Lake Toba, right? Tongi. Tongi Lake Toba is where we're heading right now. So let's go. Look 
look at this. How fucking beautiful is this, man? Crazy. You can see that very, very far from here, there's the uh, waterfall where I was uh, yesterday. Crazy how beautiful it is. Wow. Look at this place. That's the island? Yeah. Jesus, man, that's f***ing huge. That's a lot. Oh my god. That's... I knew that the island in the middle of Lake Toba is pretty big. But I was not expecting that this is gonna be this f***ing huge, man. The island in Lake Toba is approximately the same size as Singapore. That's the island. That right there. It's incredibly big. We spend the rest of the day hanging around town, meeting locals, before I set off to my next destination the next day. Today I'm gonna continue my journey. I'm trying to go to Pukitingi. Of course I'm not gonna make the journey because it's almost 700 kilometers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much Thank for uh, hosting me, okay. showing me around the place. Woo! Today is f***ing awesome! Damn! That's a crazy beautiful lake from here. So cool. Stuff for a quick oil change because, like, I still haven't done it since I bought the bike. We got some amazing view to Lake Toba from here, just on the side of the road. Oh my god, how beautiful it is! The weather today is 10 out of 10 sunny, it's warm, I'm not on the bike, so I'm dressed up because otherwise I would feel cold a bit. an amazing view from up here down the lake oh Sumatra is amazing it's going over all expectations man it's awesome found this sick place pretty cool restaurant with a really nice view now I'm gonna have lunch right here the reason I think that I will never be a good influencer when I'm hungry I just forgot to film the food like I, I never do that you can imagine this this was good with this view, gotta keep moving as time is against me. Let's go. I spent the majority of the day riding through villages, small towns, jungles, hills. I start to understand how privileged we are in Europe. It's crazy, man. Our way of life is... Mother... Our way of life is so luxurious compared to people in Indonesia here. It's crazy. When I came across a very interesting looking, for me, pretty unusual celebration. Oh my god, did you see that? Like, you know, that was a big party, right? It looked like a big party. Everyone's dancing around throwing money around, they've been dancing with food, meats and I, I thought that, oh someone's getting married right? nah dude, that was a funeral I just, I just looked there a little bit more, I saw that there was like a beautiful coffin in the middle and people are just dancing around the coffin and I'm like, ah, how should I have known that? Like, how am I supposed to know that? 97 kilometers to cover today. I'm somewhere in some small town. I still, you know, I will never know. I don't know what are the names. I'm just using an offline map. I'm not even checking where I am. You know, just trying to make as much distance as possible. Um, I don't know what this is, but it, it really tastes a little bit like avocado. And then I got some rice and here's the pork and uh, glass of soup all right it's very tasty though so let's not forget it's still rainy season and this can happen anytime really and you know, i was not surprised to be honest but i was 100 percent sure that this is gonna happen today like one day without rain ah that doesn't work like that i really hope this is gonna blow over in like 20 minutes or something and then I can continue going on. I only have 85 kilometers left. So if I'm gonna finish with that one, then today I did really, really good. This is a really nice rainbow. So I think it's sometimes worth riding, right? 
How beautiful is that? So I continued the journey when suddenly I made a terrible mistake. Alright, I didn't make any videos until I got to this guest house. I made the biggest fucking stupid mistake ever. Going too fast. Do not drive too fast. I fell with the bike. And now uh, I have a little bit of scar right there. I have a teeny weeny scar right over there. And one on my close to my elbow. The reason it is blue, I put this disinfecting cream stuff liquid on it. That's not the worst because the worst is that I kind of up my uh, my legs as you can see this is a normal one and this one has this big thing right over there the good thing is that oh my god it's like a the good thing is that i can i can walk so you know i can like like not too much right now but i can move it around and it doesn't really hurt that bad so i think nothing broke I, I didn't tear any of the muscles, probably not big of an issue. So what happened already out of the town, inside the towns they usually put down these concrete little pieces that will slow you down so you're not gonna go too fast inside the area where people actually live. And I thought that I already left the place. And here in this specific village, they always put down not one, but three of them. So it's not gonna be like the it's gonna be like that, 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 that. I went through a couple of them and I, I swear that I thought that there's no chance that there's gonna be any more. And I was going with like 60, 65 maybe. I just saw them right in front of me. I was going way too fast compared to how fast I was supposed to go into these things. And uh, I just I just crashed. I was like da, 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 da. I am not gonna run around. That's 100% sure. And tomorrow morning there's a there's a pharmacy right next to the guest house here so i'm gonna get myself some meds some bandages and all that so you know should be okay and then i can continue what i'm doing i am not gonna release this video until i'm not leaving indonesia so if you're probably watching this i am far away from indonesia already the reason is because i don't want to tell this to my mom until it has no weight you know Oh my god, my both my family, my, my mom, my dad, my sister, everyone will tell me that you f***ing idiot, we told you not to do it. And you know what's wrong? That they would be right, of course. You guys are so f***ing right. I'm so sorry, but yeah, I'm, I, I can't tell you this one right now because you guys would go f***ing insane and I love you so much. So you're gonna know it soon enough when we can just, you know, just laugh, laugh it out, you know. Haha, <laughs> oh my son, he fell with the bike in, in Sumatra you know scootering solo through indonesia ah 3 45 in the morning and it's not enough that my ankle hurts but now uh i have a terrible diarrhea as well and basically I'm, I'm sorry for this but i'm peeing on my butthole right now i don't know what the f is that. what did i eat that screw me up i mean it can be anything really i don't know what this is tomorrow is a rest day because I feel f***ed up. I should sleep really but the the roosters are just screaming outside. Oh, cool, cool. I try and get some sleep but in 15-20 minutes I will probably get to go out and uh, in a bucket. Oh yeah because of my ankle I can't really squat down to the toilet so I had to somehow in a bucket. So funny. Ugh, anyway. Good night. After a couple days resting, I came to the conclusion that this trip ends here. I couldn't walk, let alone travel solo, so I sold the bike and took a flight back to Kuala Lumpur to stay safe, rest and heal for a couple weeks. But I already knew that a new adventure was about to begin. Straight